I love hoop earrings and today I'm going to be making two pairs using memory wire. Hello my YouTube friends, it's lovely to have you back again. If you're new here my name's Carol and on this channel I show you how easy it is to make your own jewellery. So today I'm going to be using some 4cm memory wire to make two pairs of hoop earrings. I love memory wire and I'm always thinking about how I can use it in a different way rather than just making a bracelet or a necklace with it and so that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. I will walk you step by step through the process of making these two pairs of earrings. As well I will talk about everything that you need and leave links in the description box below. So let's get started. The first pair of earrings doesn't take many supplies at all. As I said I've got some 4cm memory wire here and you'll need about 3 wraps or 3 loops of memory wire. You could make these bigger if you wanted to but I had some 4cm and I think that it works perfectly for these earrings. I've also got a pair of ear hooks, these are 19mm uh, twist ear hooks. I have got 8 of these beautiful glass pearls and these ones are 4mm and the colour is cream. I've also got eight of these uh, 11 seed beads. These are Ceylon seed beads and the color is yellow. As well as that, I have two of these beautiful 16 by 12 shell drops in the natural color. And I will leave links in the description box below to everything for these earrings. So let's just talk a little bit about memory wire. If you haven't used memory wire before, so memory wire is made of tempered steel and what that means is it's really really hard and it also holds its shape so when I pull it out of shape it goes back in. If you have an ordinary piece of wire if you pull it out like that it, will, it won't hold its shape it won't spring back. So I've already cut my memory wire and I've cut it to approximately two centimeters past one loop so one loop would finish there and I've actually cut it to there. So you can see it overlaps by about two centimeters. Now when you're cutting memory wire you do need to be careful. You need to use specialized memory wire cutters and I will leave a link in the description box below for these as well. The reason you need to use specialized cutters is because the memory wire is so hard it will absolutely ruin your normal cutters if you use them for memory wire. So remember that. If you don't have memory wire cutters you can use an old pair of pliers, uh, cutters and that will work fine too but it will ruin your good flush cutters. So for example if you use these ones you will find that you get nice little divots along your uh, blades and you don't want that. Believe me I have done it. It's a really uh, dangerous thing to do to have your cutters sitting there while you're cutting memory wire because it's so easy just to reach out and grab them. The other tools that you will need for this project is you will need a pair of round nose pliers and you'll also need two pairs of chain nose pliers. Now today I'm going to be using my uh, crimping pliers because they have a nice point because I'm going to be doing some really tricky, uh, not tricky but fiddly things and so these ones have a nice point and I'm going to be using those. But you could use two pairs of chain nose pliers as well. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do once you've cut your memory wire is we're going to make a loop in one end of the wire. So taking my round nose pliers I'm going to hold the memory wire and I'm just going to pull it out a little bit with my finger like that and I'm going to um, make the loop so it moves away from me. So I have put the wire between the jaws of the pliers and I'm making sure that it's not sticking up because I want to get a nice closed loop and I'm just pulling the wire open and holding the memory wire between my thumb and my forefinger. Now I'm just going to twist away from me and push against my thumb. So memory wire as I said is quite hard and so it is a little bit harder to make loops than standard wire. And then take your pliers out, readjust and keep going until you have the end of the wire. Sometimes it takes me two or three tries so don't worry about that. So you want the end of the wire to meet up with the other part of the wire so that your loop is closed. Now we're not worrying about centering the loop or anything like that at this time. It's still not closed. We just want to get a nice closed loop. Now if you can't get a closed loop 
you can see there my loop isn't quite closed. What you can do, and it's fine to do with these uh, earrings, is take your chain nose pliers and just give it a squeeze. Just so that the wire meets. You don't want to squeeze it too hard because you don't want it to push off in the other direction. But that will work quite nicely. Okay, so there's my loop. And now I'm going to feed on my beads. And these earrings are super easy to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of my uh, little seed beads. And I'm just going to feed them onto the wire. There we go. So I've got my two little seed beads on. Now I'm going to put on two of my little glass pearls. Now I'm going to put on one of my drops. Now these drops, just before I do that, they have a right and, the, and wrong side. So if you can see there, I've got a... Um, this side is a little indented and that side isn't. So I want to make sure that when I put my drops on and when I put my ear wire on, they're both going the same way. So I'm going to thread on that one. This drop has a, the hole in the top, so it hangs really nicely on there. Now I'm going to reverse that. So two more of the glass pearls. And two more of the seed beads. Now I chose these yellow seed beads because I initially I didn't have any cream ones and I thought that the colour actually went quite well with the colours that I've got there. So even though they're a little bit more yellowy than the cream, it kind of steps up because the shell is a bit lighter than the cream. So I've got lightest and then a little bit darker and then the, the more yellow on the end there. And I think that works really well. Okay, so what we need to do now is put a loop in this end. So using the same process, holding it in your pliers and pushing down and twisting just like before, readjusting and going again. And once again I'm going to give it a squeeze just to make sure that it's closed properly. So there's my earring so far. Now what I'm going to do is put my ear hook on. Now with these twist ear hooks, this side of the loop opens, so I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to do that. I'm holding the loop on the side there and just supporting the ear, ear wire with my thumb and my forefinger and just twisting down. Now what you need to do is make sure you get both of these loops into that ear wire. So we'll put one on, and then stack the other one and then close up the ear wire by reversing the process and make sure it's really well closed. Now you see what I've done here I've actually put my ear wire on backwards because this is the wrong side so what I'm going to do instead of taking it off what I can do is just twist it around holding the loop and just twisting it. So there's my earring all done. So I've already made another one so there's my pair of earrings there. Before we go ahead and make earrings number two, if you're enjoying this video it would be really wonderful if you would hit that subscribe button and also click on that little notification bell so that you will never miss a thing. I upload uh, new projects every week. All right now we're going to make another pair. These ones are a little bit more complex but they are worth the effort believe me. Still not hard just a little bit more fiddly. So let's get started and have a look at those ones. To make the second pair of earrings you are going to need a few more supplies. So what I have in front of me are 26 of these beautiful 8mm silver foil lined beads and the colour is peach and it is gorgeous. I also have a couple of head pins, 5cm long ones, I've got two little heart charms, uh, these are 11 by 9 I have a pair of ear hooks, I've got two 4mm filigree silver beads. I have four 2mm, sorry, four 4mm four 
uh, jump rings and I've got some chain now the chain is a 5.5 millimeter twist cable chain and you'll need about 22 centimeters in total as well as I've got that I've got my memory wire and I have already pre-cut it just like I did in the last one so it's overlapping by about uh, two centimeters okay now first before you start I suggest that you cut your chain now I've already pre-cut mine and I counted the links rather than cutting it and measuring it because it gives you a much more accurate result so what I have is four cent four pieces at 11 links and then I have two pieces cut at three links and I have two pieces cut at two links so I know that seems really fussy but it is important to get them exactly right otherwise your earrings won't hang properly so the first thing I'm going to do is make my loop in my memory wire just like before so I'm taking my round nose pliers and just making a loop away from me just like I did with the last pair Now it's fine if you need to squash it flat this way as well, if you overlap it you can give it a little squeeze and it'll probably click back into place. There you go, you heard it. So that's what I have, whoops. Now I'm going to thread on my beads, super simple again. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to, actually before I do that I need to make my dangle, don't I? So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to use my piece of three linked chain to make it move those ones out of the way for a minute and one of my head pins so the first thing I'm going to do is put my one of my little filigree beads onto a head pin now with these filigree beads I always have this problem where I go and put it through the hole and it's the wrong hole so make sure it's not centered on the uh, bead so on the head pin so make sure you get it through the right hole so that it's nicely centered it's a trick for young players that one <laughs> and then I'm going to put on one of my eight millimeter silver foil beads next I am going to make a loop at the top so to do that if you haven't made a loop before I will leave you a link in the description box below for a video all about how to make loops but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the wire over my thumbnail sticking my thumbnail on the top of the bead and just bending it to a right angle then I'm going to take my flush cutters not my memory wire cutters and I'm going to cut that wire to about a centimeter from the um, bend. Now if you are, when you're making earrings, it's a really good idea to do this together. I'm not going to do it today, but to do the pieces together so that you get the exact measurements. So I would measure that length there. Okay, now I'm going to make my loop. going to straighten it up a little bit so there is my loop and I am going to now open my loop so taking my chain nose pliers and supporting the beads with my thumb and my fingers I'm going to twist down just like opening a jump ring and I'm going to feed on that little piece of chain so the end link of that piece of chain there we go and I'm going to close that um, up there so there's my little dangle and that's all I'm going to do okay so now I'm going to feed on the beads so the first thing I'm going to do is feed on one of my beads then I'm going to feed on one of my links of my 11 uh, link piece so the end link there and then I'm going to feed on another one another bead and the other link of the chain so now I've got two beads with two pieces of chain then I'm going to feed on four beads And now I'm going to put on the end piece of chain, in the, the end link of this little piece of chain from my dangle. So 
so that's what I have now. Now I'm just going to repeat that up the other side, so I'm going to put on uh, four beads. Now I'm going to take my bottom piece of chain from the other side and I'm going to put the end link, the other end, over the piece of memory wire. Like that. Now I'm going to put on one more bead and repeat that with the other piece of chain. And one more bead. So that's what I have now. And next all I need to do is put a, link, a loop in this end of the memory wire just like I did with the other end. Now what I'm doing here is just making sure that my loops are not sitting nice and flat because I, if they're angled in any way they won't sit nicely in the ear wire or in the jump rings. So I just wanted to make sure they were sitting nice and flat. So that's what I have now. Alright, now we're going to make our little dangle for the heart. So to do that I'm going to take one of my hearts and I'm going to use, as I said, my um, crimping pliers because they've got a nice sharp point. So I'm taking one of my jump rings, because I'm using four millimeter jump rings, uh, it, it's a lot to get in the four millimeter jump ring, so using the, the fine nose of the pliers just helps. And I'm going to open my jump ring. Now I'm going to feed on one of my little pieces of chain and I want a two, not a three. So there we go and my heart. Then I'm just going to reverse that process. Now if you haven't used jump rings before I will leave a link in the description box below for a video all about using jump rings. I'm just going to double check that's sitting nice and flat, which it is. So there's my little dangle and I am going to put a jump ring on the other end. Right, so now I've got the jump ring on, I'm also going to feed on the two loops of my earring. So what I want to do is make sure that they're sitting one on top of each other, like that. I'll just move those beads out of the way so you can see. So one on top of the other. And so I'm feeding the jump ring in from the back to the front, making sure everything kind of stays in there as best I can. Whoops, popped off. And that's why I said I needed to use the fine nose pliers because it's just a lot to ask of that little jump ring. And memory wire is quite springy so it does like to go back to where it its original shape. Right. <laughs> Actually it is, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so that's what I have now. And it's hard to show you, but the chain doesn't, when, when these pieces of chain are hanging, it looks better. And then I'm going to put another jump ring at the top here and attach the air wire. Wrong pliers. So I'm going to put my ear wire on first and then I'm going to do the same thing, squeeze it so that the uh, loops are overlapping and feed that jump ring through. 
Now this is a little, uh, it's a little fiddly. It's not hard, it's just a little fiddly. And I feel like I'm all fingers and thumbs, as I said today. There we go. Now we're all through and I'm putting my ear hook back on, so. There we go. And closing that up. All right. And there is my earring. Now I've already made the second one and they're very cool and certainly worth the effort of making them. Now this one here isn't quite sitting right so I'm just going to grab my pliers and just holding the ear wire give it a wee twist. So there we go. So two pairs of earrings made with memory wire in a really really short time and honestly you could go wild with this you could use any kind of beads that first uh, set that i made you could use any color any shape any size and just have fun with it you could add a dangle if you didn't want to add the the uh, teardrop just go with it <laughs> have fun <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. It was really wonderful having you along for the ride. And if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more, it would be really great if you would subscribe and like the video. And of course, ring that little notification bell so that you will never miss a thing. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever made earrings with memory wire before or if you'd ever thought about making hoops with memory wire. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again soon.